Okay, and welcome to another episode of Art Source. Okay, in this episode, it's a follow up to the previous episode in which I talked about measuring when drawing or painting from life or observation. So, you really need to watch that video first uh, before you pursue this one. Um, if you did not get a chance to see it, just go to YouTube and search my name, Micah Gogan, M I C A H. G-O-G-U-E-N, and then art source number 11, and it'll bring up the previous video. So building on that knowledge, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and frame or perimeter this life object. And what I'm talking about is when I am looking at things um, in life or observation, I am basically trying to frame them similar to this so that I can translate it to the paper. Right, because there are no perimeters or boundaries around these objects. So I am basically creating one, but of course we can or cannot carry around one of these. A lot of times we have the little viewfinders when we're doing plein air or whatever. But I'm gonna try and teach you how to do it when you do not have that viewfinder or you don't have that frame. So uh, I'm gonna do the drawing just with a simple Sharpie because I want it to show up very easily for you. Uh, but this applies whether you're drawing or painting or whatever. Let me just tilt this up a little bit so you can see. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first try and set my boundaries on the paper. Remember in the previous video I said try and set the boundaries in the first 10 to 15 seconds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and decide how much negative space I want around the entire object. And um, looking through the camera right now, I do not want this amount of negative space here. I'm not interested in that. So I need to determine what my uh, east boundary is gonna be. And if you watch the previous video, we can speed this up a bit and it's right here. So I'm gonna try and create a mark on the paper. I'm just guessing and I'm just saying, okay, my east boundary is gonna be right here, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my south boundary and I'm gonna say, okay, well within the square, it's more in this lower right-hand quadrant. And so I'm just gonna say that that's as low as I wanna go. Then I'm gonna do my whole um, west boundary and I'm taking my object and I'm saying, okay, it's hitting the poochy part of this vase right there. There we go, boom. And so I'm gonna create that. And then I'm gonna have a north boundary um, where I'm hitting the top of that and it's a little bit off of the center and to the right. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you is in the first 10 to 15 seconds, I've established a north, south, east, west boundary. Okay, and depending on where they fell, whether they were in the upper quadrant, lower quadrant, if you've ever um, gridded an image with me, then you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about quadrants. If not, we'll create another video. Um, so now that I've got those boundaries down, I'm going to do what I mentioned in the previous video where I connect. So I'm, I'm taking the brush and I'm putting it down until it hits the object and it hits another object. And you see that when it's touching these two objects, finally, it's creating a diagonal. And I'm holding my arm straight and I'm keeping that and I'm scanning it right over here and then I've got another um, another angle, right? So then I can just draw that boundary that I had. So there is the angle, and then there it is translated onto the paper. Do you see how we did that? Boom, boom. And then I'm gonna do the same thing really rapidly because I don't want this to take forever. And I can do that and I can say, okay, now I can shave off a little bit of that. There's another boundary. And then I can do another one. So now I've got this angle here. Sorry, it would help if I'd look through the camera. There we go, and there we go. And so now I can say, okay, boom, there we go. And then there might be a little subtle one there. And now that I've got the containment, what I've done is I've pretty much isolated that all of my shapes are gonna fit within this module. So I've created a big module to encapsulate everything that is right in front of me. And so, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be rocket science. Just give it your best guess and set a perimeter. And now I will know when I'm drawing that I don't have to go outside of that box and therefore it'll keep me from going off the paper, which is my default. I tend to draw and paint so big that I go off of my substrate. So now within this one piece, I'm gonna try and create three bite-sized pieces. And you can pretty much repeat the same thing where you can create another angle, and then you can carry it over and, and whatnot. But we're gonna go back to our basic shapes where we are drawing, and I'm trying to draw the containment of the, the one shape there. And then for here, I see the cylinder, and this all goes back to other teachings that I've had. So 
if you don't understand it, just kind of let it go until I do another video. But, you know, the four basic shapes, we're looking for the cylinder, we're looking for the module, the cone, the, um, let's see, cone, cylinder, sphere, and um, cube. So I've got those shapes, and just within that, I can, you know, do some of those drawings, and then I've got a little bit more of an idea of the shapes of what I'm trying to create. So I will do a little bit of that guy. Actually, I'll make it a little bit bigger. And then we can just pull that down. You see? And then I can take measurements and try and figure out well, how many of this is in here. So I'm gonna go and, and create that and say, well, there's one and there's almost exactly two. So then I come to my paper. Now, let me just reiterate. Now, this is close, but it's not gonna be exact. Do you see the amount? See, I'm, I'm moving this until it hits the top of the glass and then I'm sliding my fingers down to make this segment be X, which is the amount of this bottle. And then I'm saying, okay, there's one X and then there's one X there too. Now, it doesn't mean that this is gonna be the exact size of this, although in this example or video, it's close, but you may get to a point where, what if the paper was half this size? Well, I wouldn't have this bottle be the same size because then I wouldn't be able to fit everything on this piece of paper, right? So you're not measuring apples to apples, you're measuring apples to apples and you're re-measuring and measuring oranges to oranges. So even if these are not the same exact amount, which like I said in this video, they kind of are, but if this were smaller, then you know, you're not trying to make this be this size because it would be smaller, okay? So anyway, in this exact example, um, I can take a fresh measurement and I'm just measuring this because that's what I'm interested in. And I see that, uh-oh, I've, I've made this too big. So this needs to be shortened down in order for it to be the proper size. So now I'm gonna make this the top and I'm gonna bring this down. And I know that it's a Sharpie and I'm making a big mess, but you know, I mean, it's whatever. It's whatever we gotta do to correct it. And I don't really care, but now with this new measurement, I can say, okay, well look, there is the one and look, there's the two. Okay, so that gives me two. So you see how much I had to drop it in order to get two of these in one um, setting? And that made the whole shape a little bit more accurate. And if I was painting, I could just, or if it was pencil, I could just erase that or whatnot. Okay, and then I can, you know, notice other little things like this could be a little bit more um, wide in order to be a more accurate shape. And, you know, the more I make the lines darker, then the more I don't even see the old residue. I can pull this down. I see that this has a lot of dark modules so I can kind of block in my value. And you know, overall, I've got my shape pretty quick. And I can end up with a pretty nice little drawing and just because I set my perimeters, right? And this is just Xerox paper. I mean, it's nothing life-changing. I mean, 10 minutes a sharpie and a five dollar setup and you could be practicing and measuring your way around and then you know of course adding your detail but not until you've double checked all your measurements to make sure that your objects are in proportion but it's an easy quick way to get more accurate with your drawing and then of course anything that you learn on this you can apply to you know figures landscapes whatever you know but these are just small little objects that you can draw that will give you an idea. Don't forget your shadow shapes, so be sure to, you know, draw those guys in there so that you have a little bit more uh, volume and light source. Because remember, I do have the um, light up here, so I want to catch that directional light and how it's uh, casting the shadows on there appropriately. And, um, you know, that's kind of it. That's how you would apply uh, in a setting of, of drawing and, and get your ideas for your basic shape. So I hope that you'll put this in an application and I hope it was helpful. Uh, please subscribe so that you can get more of these little nuggets and feel free to leave comments if there's something that you'd like to see more videos on. Thank you.